for our very fair and balanced panel, Bree Payton. She's the staff writer for the Federalist and a Democratic Strategist, and Elizabeth and Democratic strategist, rather, Elizabeth Gore. Yes, two very separate things there. <laughs> okay, ladies, first of all, thanks for joining. Thank uh, you. So we get this update from Molly that tells us that there has been another plea uh, guilty this time on the part of Gates. Uh, let me start with you, Bree. How difficult does this make this for Paul Manafort, which absolutely is a separate entity than the president, but certainly uh, very closely connected to him? How difficult is it now for Paul Manafort to move forward with a presumption of innocence? Right. I mean, I definitely think that this doesn't look good for him, but this isn't anything new. I mean, we all knew that Manafort was shady years and years ago. I mean, this is widely reported among Ukrainian and other foreign uh, news organizations in the United States media started to pick up on Manafort's shady connections with Ukrainian oligarchs several years ago before the Donald Trump uh, you know, campaign decided to make him campaign manager. I think what's very clear is that there's a poor lack of, very big lack of judgment in getting him involved at all with well, all of this information. Information Let's talk, reported. Elizabeth, about the president's judgment on bringing Manafort on board, but also his judgment to, at some point, separate himself and the campaign from Paul Manafort. Uh, what do you think that will play in terms of the president's uh, involvement here? At some point, as Bree points out, he, he, he recruited Paul Manafort. He was a part of the team. But certainly when it looked like there was going to be an issue uh, around the Russian involvement, we saw the president separate himself. Will that help him? Listen, I think that the bottom line is that this shows part of a pattern. Paul Manafort is just one piece of a larger uh, problem that the president has. He's surrounded himself with people who have been charged with tax evasion, money laundering, conspiracy, lying to the FBI, lying to investigators. But, but that's Paul Manafort, right? That's not necessarily President Trump. Well, the, um, the investigation so far has resulted in 100 criminal charges against 19 people. None and of which have been named Donald J. Trump so far, correct? Absolutely. But I think that we have to recognize that these represent the inner circle of the Trump campaign in the White House. But Bri, right. how, how about that, though? Is that a fair uh, kind of point that birds of a feather always flock together? I mean, this is a, certainly a matter of law here, and so it's going to take more than that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely birds of a feather flock together, and I think we could talk about Hillary Clinton and all of her colleagues and all of the other things all day long. We could talk about that for days and days and days. And also, I mean, Let's be honest here. We were promised that the Trump administration, from Mueller, from the media, from everyone, that Trump and his affiliates colluded with Russian officials to steal an electoral victory away from Hillary Clinton. And we were told time and time again that Mueller's probe and his investigation would prove that. It's a year later. Knock, knock. Where's the smoking gun? But Where's Bree, the Russia but collusion? Bree, I've, I've heard that kind of talking point, if you will, respectfully, um, from some of your colleagues. But we do see more and more guilty pleas. We're seeing more and more indictments, and we're seeing more and more arrests. So could the argument be made that while you're absolutely right, certainly nothing's been charged against the president at this point, Mueller's obviously moving closer to some target? Yeah, so something that hasn't really been widely reported that often is that it's likely we're going to see a motion uh, for uh, uh, a guilty plea reversal for General Flynn because of prosecutorial misconduct in the Department of Justice and how they handled that investigation. Just last week, uh, a judge ordered that the department investigation reveal all of their evidence that would be favorable to Michael Flynn, um, you know, kind of implying or raising questions about how they've handled it thus far, kind of, you know, did they withhold favorable evidence to Flynn and his attorneys? How are they handling this? Are they being fair? Are they acting in a way that's questionable? Let me ask this final question to you, Elizabeth. Bree does bring a good point up, I think, around the DOJ and its credibility. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the Nunes memo and different things like that, which have, have targeted the DOJ, uh, as well as the FBI and their fairness to President Trump. Uh, where do they stand, the DOJ and the FBI, around rehabbing their credibility? So even if an indictment comes down, more so, whether it's Jared Kushner or eventually even the president, uh, does the public have reason to be suspicious of the validity of said investigation? Absolutely not. Robert M Mueller is, has impeccable uh, credentials. He is a decorated war hero with a very strong reputation. And he is looking for the truth. He's not out after Donald Trump. He's out after the truth, and apparently that's making the White House very nervous. All right, ladies. Well, certainly uh, very different viewpoints on uh, certainly what's coming out of the DOJ and the FBI, and ultimately I think this will continue to be an issue. Thank you both.